through all the various technological advances that come up in the marketing industry every year. Um, and here today, we're doing a session for non-members. So you're not a member, but uh, we're going to do kind of the same thing. That kind of coaching atmosphere uh, is what I want to get into today. Uh, there's going to be three segments kind of each stack to, to give you some value, whether you do have a question for the Q&A or not, you should still walk away with, with a bunch of value. First up, I'm gonna bring on Patrick. He's the head of our marketing department. He wants to talk to you about uh, live art shows. This is basically the, the single art selling strategy that he is uh, totally ignited by right now, extremely excited about it. He is running as many of them as he can because uh, they are just really working well. He's gonna kind of brief you on what that is. This is something you can do on your own, uh, Art Storefronts kind of provides the full playbook for it, all the details, but uh, the basic strategy you can take and run with whether you're an Art Storefronts member or not. So I really want you to see what he has to say about that. It may uh, be a little bit eye-opening about uh, just how much you can do from home, right where you're at without any sort of third party giving you an opportunity. This whole strategy is about uh, just creating that opportunity for yourself at home. Uh, so we're gonna do that first. Patrick will tell you about live art shows. I'll come back on afterwards. I'm gonna run through some of the kind of most frequently asked questions about art storefronts because as we run these things, oftentimes a lot of people have uh, honestly the same questions over and over because uh, there's there's a few things that everybody wants to know, the, the first things that come to mind. So I'm gonna run through uh, a small handful of those to do with, um, you know, why is someone a good fit and uh, what is the marketing program at Art Storefronts actually like? What does it include? What does it look like and feel like on a weekly basis? Uh, trying to try to make that less vague and less just like, you know, you get some articles or something. It's, it's, it's much more than that. So I'll tell you about that. I'll answer all those questions. And then we'll get into an open Q&A where uh, you can bring whatever you like to the table. So like I said, my whole job is, is not to sell Art Storefronts, but actually to work internally, helping our members build their business businesses and I'm available to you today to do the same thing. So you can hit me with whatever challenge you're dealing with right now, questions about your niche or hearing about new technologies like NFTs or wondering, you know, if, if Instagram's ever going anywhere for you or if you're doing something wrong there or thinking the holidays are coming up and what do you do with that? Or should you be producing more work or focusing on marketing the work you have right now? And by the way, how do you know if you have the right uh, work that's going to build your business? Or have you already arrived at it? How can you test that? Like I said, uh, that's that's what my day to day is all about. And I'd be happy to help you today. If you can just uh, kind of hone it into a specific question, I will be happy to give you advice. You can use the chat here in Zoom. You can hit the raise hand button in Zoom, which you'll find under the reactions button under my head reactions raise hand. If you do that, I'll know you want to be unmuted and we can have a conversation. If you don't want to figure out how to type what's on your mind, I can unmute you. Uh, like I said, that'll be after I give you some frequently asked que uh, questions about our storefronts, as well as Patrick's presentation on the, the newest strategy that he is super excited about live art shows. Let's kick it all off now over to Patrick for uh, his thoughts. Hey. My name is Patrick. I run the marketing department here at Art Storefronts. And what is this? This is an art business workshop. Um, and I usually start these things by saying a couple of things. One, um, I've been doing this for a long time, not running the webinar part, but like how do you apply modern marketing, digital and otherwise, to the task that you guys are trying to, to complete, which is, you know, how do you build a thriving art and or photography business. You go from hobbyist to side hustle, how you go from side hustle to pro, and once you're at the pro level, how you grow that and grow that and grow that. In addition to that, I run three of these things a week, been doing that for over a year and a half, as well as running several internally with my customers. Why am I bringing that up? I'm bringing that up to say, on a week in, week out basis, I don't think it's hyperbole to say there's, I've probably talked to more artists and photographers about their marketing and business issues than any human being on the planet. Uh, as a final, we have 5,700 customers at Art Storefronts, and I study their data very intently. And what do I mean by that? Who's selling the most originals? Who's selling the highest volume of originals? Who's selling the cheapest originals? Who's selling the highest price originals? Who's selling the most commissions? Are they doing the commissions as individual events or one-offs? Uh, who's selling the most prints? Who's selling the most metal prints, uh, photo paper prints, frame prints, uh, canvas gallery wraps? And, and then you, know, you, you have that data, and not only do you have that data in terms of what's actually selling, I have the data in terms of what sources of traffic are actually driving the sales. And I feel like this is an industry, your guys' industry, there are so many charlatans running around 
saying this works and that works and go do this and go do that. And I, I derive a great deal of pleasure in being able to call BS on a lot of these people in about two seconds because I have the data. Like I get to see, we study every single solitary customer that is doing well and we dig into everything. How many emails do they have on their list? How many Facebook fans do they have? How many Instagram followers do they have? Is organic traffic working, right? How often are they running a sale? How often are they running live art shows? How often are they posting? And we, we look at all, all these sorts of things. And I think when you, when you have that data, it's probably one of the biggest advantages that we have as a business because I can tell you what's working. I can tell you what's not working. And let me tell you, the what's not working sometimes is more important than what's working because so many people will spend hours and days and weeks and months on something that is not ever going to grow their business one single solitary bit. So a lot of times the advice on what to do is equally powerful on what not to do. Like ignore that. Do not worry about that. I don't have a single solitary person out of my 5,700 person customer base that is making a dime off Pinterest. Not one, right? So don't waste any time on Pinterest if your job is to build an art business. So I'm getting fired up already. Agenda for today's show. So I have like a presentation that I run at the top. It sort of sits on top of what we do as a business as art storefronts. It's the set of circumstances, the business model, a set of premises that I believe all of you guys need to nod your heads on and agree with. If you want to be successful, it doesn't matter if you ever sign up with us. I could care less. It's not going to care less. I'd love for you to sign up, but it doesn't, it, 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 it's not just to do business with us. Like you have to get this right. If you want to be an artist or a photographer whose business is growing year over year over year, you have to get this set of circumstances right. So I start with the presentation. Um, after the presentation is when we get into the Q&A. You can ask anything about anything. Anything we do, anything marketing related, Facebook related, live art show related, anything about anything. And I'd, and I'd, and I'd love to help. My, my, my honest goal in a win for this session is that you guys all leave um, with some things that you can bolt into your business and change to start making an impact right now to start actually growing your business right now. So that's the goal. A um, couple of things. As I go through this little presentation, there's going to be videos and PDFs and links and, and all these sorts of things. We'll throw some of them into the chat. Um, but don't feel like you need to like click on every single solitary one or bookmark them or, or you know, write them down or whatever. As soon as this thing's over, I'm going to send you an email. You know, thanks for attending the session. Uh, here's the video, and the video will be embedded in the web page. And then underneath it will be every single solitary link and video I mentioned as I go through the entire thing. Um, and we, you know, we change it. We change it a little bit every time. So you'll have that. You'll have that info. You'll have that ammo to play with. Um, and then we'll get into everything else on the on the on the other side. Of the ones we'll just get things fired up. So. Not sure if you are familiar with this Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but I sort of stole it and I've created what I call the art selling pyramid. Okay, this is the path to a successful art business in 2021 and beyond. Very, very important and, and no different than Maslow's hierarchy of needs. You know, it's a pyramid. You have to sort the bottom blocks and then you can sort the next block up, you know, as you're climbing up the pyramid. And, you know, in Maslow's case, the bottom block is physiological, right? We all need to eat. We all need to sleep. We all need to do that daily. We get that taken care of and sorted. Then we can work on safety, love, belonging, esteem, self-actualization, whatever that means. So the bottom block of the pyramid, okay? It's attention. And this one is so, so important. The currency of the land that we live in in 2021 is attention, right? It is the biggest problem that every single solitary artist and photographer has, especially every single solitary artist and photographer in the Zoom call. How do I know that? I've talked to hundreds of you, and it's the biggest problem for all my customers, too. I would love to tell you that the world that we live in in 2021 and, and even years previous, uh, the artist or the photographer that is best at their craft wins. Not true. It's not a meritocracy on how good you are at what you do. It's not. The best art, the best photography that gets seen wins. And there is a huge gulf between the stuff that does get seen and doesn't get seen. And the biggest problem that every single solitary one of you guys have is a marketing problem. And no different than in Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the physiological block is daily. We have to eat and sleep daily. If you want to build a business and have it grow, you have to be working on attention, getting more of it on your marketing on a daily basis. And... You know, I, I, I just, I know this conclusively. All, I, every single solitary customer that we have, even the ones that are knocking on the million dollar a year, they want to grow that thing to $5 million a year. How are they going to do that? By focusing on getting more attention on their marketing. And, you know, one thing I always say, and this gets me in trouble sometimes, but I don't care, I say it anyway. Who are some of the most powerful women in the world? How would you answer that question? You know how I answer it? It's the Kardashian-Jenner sisters. 
It's Kardashian and Jenner sisters, okay? We can all argue about how those surgically altered, well-endowed women got their attention. What we can't argue is the fact that every one of them has a 5, 10, 50, 100, whatever million dollar a year business. I mean, one of them just started a tequila brand, and year one, the tequila brand's already sold like $30 million worth. 818, whatever she calls it. I don't even know which one of them it is. The point is, the point is to bring it home. Those gals understand the currency of the land is attention. With it, you can do anything without it. You're not in the game to bring it home to you guys. If either any of those surgically enhanced, well-endowed women decided to paint tomorrow, to take up a paintbrush tomorrow, or to get an iPhone and start taking photos, they would have a $10 million a year art business year one. They just would. Is that fair? No, it's not. But it is the point that they understand attention is the currency of the land, right? It's with it, you can do anything. After we sort our attention, we're working on it daily. The next portion of the block has an outer section, intersection. Outer section is you have to understand the business model, okay? And you have to be working on building a collector list. Let's start with the business model as I grab this book over here. You have to sell direct. There can be no one in between you and your end customer, your end buyer. Why? Uh, you need to be selling direct such that you retain the information on who is purchasing your work such that you have the ability to market to these people in perpetuity. And perhaps the most important in all of this is this concept of a collector list. Now, it doesn't get talked about all that much, but from where I'm sitting and having done this for the years that I have and having seen all the customer data, I would place both the size and the health, the overall health, how well it's being nurtured and taken care of, of a collector list is either the number one or the number two most important metric, metric that dictates what size an, an art or photography business is gonna be. And I stole, I didn't steal, but I was initially switched on to the concept uh, from this book. Don't be a star starving artist. Why would you wanna read it? One, it's very thin, two, it's very good, three, it's by the best selling artist in the United States, which is Wyland, apparently it's not even close. He's the whale guy. I'll throw you a link, you can buy it in there, but uh, what I'm gonna talk about is his concept of a collector. To Wyland, it is a collector is someone that will purchase an upwards of eight plus pieces of art from him over the course of a lifetime. So he acquires a customer, and these people who he puts on his collector list buy in upwards of eight plus pieces. Some it'll be eight, some it'll be 50. He keeps painting, keeps putting out work, they just keep purchasing it and purchasing it and purchasing it. And sort of how this looks, like what, what it fundamentally looks like, let's keep the math simple. You come out with a new series, and the new series has 10 pieces in it. On Wednesday, you're going to release it to the public. On Sunday, the 4, you email your collector list, and you say, collectors, patrons, I so appreciate you guys and your continued support. Because you supported me over the years, you, of course, are going to get to see these 10 pieces before the general public. Let me know what you think. If you're interested in any of them, of course, please do let me know. And what ends, what ends up happening at first is one out of the 10, two out of the 10 are sold before the public even sees the work. And so instead of going to market with 10 pieces, you're going to market with eight pieces. And it just grows over time. And sometimes I see 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% on some people. And it is fundamentally one of the most important things that you could possibly have as an artist if you want to make it year over year. Not th I've never even seen anything as close to as important as this. And, you know, Wyland in his book goes into, like, a lot of the tactical about how you take care of this list. Uh, let me just go out and tell you, they're getting his personal Christmas card every year, okay? He is sending personalized emails to these folks on a regular basis. He is liking their Instagram posts and liking their Facebook posts or somebody on his team. He is connected with these people. He makes them feel like they are staying at the Four Seasons, okay? So, too, do you need to do that with your collectors? And we can get into, okay, well, you don't have people that have bought eight-plus pieces. I get that. There's some ways we can fake it until we make it. But the collector list, you guys are all, at the end of the day, artists and photographers, blanket statement, but it's true for 99%. You're solopreneurs, okay? You don't have a huge team behind you uh, and 15 different employees and everything else. Uh, and really, essentially, at the end of the day, you're commissioned salespeople. You guys create your awesome stuff that you create, and then you're responsible after you create it to go out and sell it. So if you pound the pavement, you have a show, uh, you do some marketing campaigns and you sell, well, guess what? You make money. You make a commission on those sales, essentially, right? But the alternative is true, too. If you create and you don't do anything, that work doesn't magically sell. You're not guaranteed anything, right? So if you have a good year, you have a good year, you worked hard. If you don't do any of that work, you're not going to sell anything. So a collector list 
takes you from commission salespeople and it pays you a base salary. So by the time you get out of bed and just for creating in the morning, you're getting paid. And it starts small. It's 10 grand a year, then it's 20 grand a year, then it's 30, 40, 50, and 60, and 70. It grows, right? And that base salary is just your collectors. They will buy, if you treat them like VIPs, your latest and greatest stuff. You just have to nurture the list all year long. And guys, it's so fundamentally important. So it's like I, I got turned on to the concept in that book probably like six years ago, and I was like, ooh, that's really interesting. And then since then, I've just been able to see customer after customer after customer, not, not even from our tutorage, just tutelage, but just that understand this fundamentally. And like their businesses are growing. Their businesses are way healthier than everyone else's. COVID hit. Their galleries are shut down. The show and fair circuit was shut down. These people didn't skip a beat. They didn't skip a beat because they kept creating and the collectors were all reachable digitally and they just continued to sell and sell, sell and sell and sell and COVID was like their biggest year ever. Anyway, let's keep rolling. We understand attention. We're working on it daily. We understand the business model. We are building and nurturing a collector list. There are three ways to sell art, okay? I believe every artist, every photographer needs to understand the fact that there are three and then needs to deploy the three uh, when it's situationally correct to do so. Number one way, the best way. Everybody knows this, it's a trick question. In person, face to face, always has been the best way to sell art or photography, always will be the best way to sell art or photography. Problem though, uh, uh, Sarah, Michael, Amber, Jimmy, and Craig, you guys, like me, we are all geographically fixed on this planet. That's number one. Number two, turns out we have to sleep. Number three, turns out we can't have 15 conversations at once. So we have to have a website, right? And the website solves for all of those. It solves for when you're asleep. It solves for when 15 people want to talk to you at the same time, right? And it obviously, it can transact commerce, which is, which is very important. But the third way, the newest way, which I would pretty much call the most profound, prolific, interesting, amazing advancement to this industry in forever, not even close, it is leveraging live video, exactly like we're doing right now, in either a one-to-one -one format or a one-to-many format okay, to sell art or photography. And let me give you the one-to-one -one, and then we'll go into depth on the, on the one-to-many. Let's say I follow Craig on Instagram and I'm like, I like this Craig. He looks like a patriotic dude. Uh, I, I'm, you know, I just remodeled a bathroom and I've got some wall space. And so I send Craig a DM on Instagram and I'm like, Craig, I'm interested in some of your pieces. Uh, I'm remodeling a bathroom. I was wondering if we could jump on a Zoom session, my wife and I and you, and you could explain to me a couple of your pieces. We could talk sizes and prices. And Craig's like, no problem, Patrick. He instantaneously sends me the Zoom link. Boom. We're in a, converse, we're, we're in a conversation. I'm getting to know him. He's merchandising the work. He's holding it up. He's talking about his inspiration, the pieces, uh, the various different options that I have as, as a buyer. My wife is right with me. So both of the decision makers are in the room, and boom, the sale gets over the line. Do you know how many artists and photographers are doing this? Do you know how many artists and photographers have buttons all over their website that says book a live art chat with me? I'll answer for you, almost none. This is fundamentally changing the way that art and photography is sold. That's the one-to-one, -one, okay? That's the one-to-one. -one. Next, let's talk about the one-to-many. The one-to-many is this concept of a live art show, okay? And I'm gonna show you a couple of these. And conceptually, it's the artist in their studio. In, in this case, uh, my good buddy Matthew, uh, sleeveless, apparently. Somebody took the sleeves off this shirt. Somebody let him know. I like making fun of him for the shirt. I can't, I, I have to. Um, in his garage studio, he lives I outside of Quebec in, in Canada, a place called Laval, and he was having what he calls a basement sale. These were old works that he did some number of years ago, and he is streaming this live to Instagram. He's streaming it live to his Facebook page. He's streaming it live to YouTube. Uh, people are able to ask questions in real time. Uh, you know, he's got numbers. Uh, he's negotiating on price. Uh, he ran two of these sales over a, I think, 15-day period in the height of COVID. He sold a little bit over 62 pieces for $30,000, excuse me, Canadian. An incredible result, right? An incredible result also in the sense that he retained all the information on who was purchasing his art. An incredible result also, he did not have to leave his house. Uh, an incredible result also in that he kept 100% of the income and the revenue from these sales, right? Um, the bad side for him is after the show was over, he had to ship 30, whatever it was, 60 pieces of art all over North America, a couple to Central America, a couple to Europe, 
uh, one to Asia, and is that it? I think that was it. And obviously a bunch in, can they, in Canada, but I covered that with North America. So we got these results with him. He's a customer. This was a case study. We helped him in the middle of COVID, and we're like, that is not normal, okay? That is not normal to get results of that. And so much of what I do, my team does at this business, is we go and find these incredible results, and we're like, how can we duplicate that? And then how can we teach our customers how to do it? This is phenomenal, right? So what have we done since then? We have run hundreds of these with every artist imaginable, every niche, every different part of the uh, United next. States, our country, other countries, and the results continue to be absolutely astounding. I have been marketing for a long time. I have never seen anything in my entire life move more art or photography as these live art shows. In this case, uh, Meg, customer, lives in Kansas City, very talented artist, moving from one studio uh, space into another. So she had a bunch of smaller pieces and color studies uh, and the like. And oh, by the way, remember this book? She had 82 pieces in the show. The show is gonna go down on a Wednesday. She sent the show inventory to her collector list on Sunday before the show. 46% of the show was purchased before she even turned the camera on and ran her live. She ended up selling a little bit over $12,000 on this one of the smaller pieces. Since then, again, we have run them in every niche, every part of the country, different artists, photographers, large social followings, small social followings, just getting started wearing white gloves not wearing white gloves i mean you name it we've run one after another after another and i've never seen anything like it i've never seen anything that is this profound now there are a number of reasons why these are so successful that we can get into in a, in a later bid but let me come off of uh, you know our little window art storefronts okay great um, yeah you know what you've done patrick what is anyone else doing it your industry is not an industry that has a lot of reports uh, you have two a year that are, that are big ones that I'm aware of. One is by a London uh, insurer called the Hiscox Report. This one is by Art Basel and UBS. They call this the Art Market Report. And I'll send you this link. You can download the report or you can like click this key findings. They made like a jazzy little website out of it. Anyway, um, chapter five, and I should say is a like sort of a disclaimer. These guys only survey the top 1% of artists in the world or top 5% if you like. Uh, the sort of the barriers, all of them have, for the most part, major representation. All are making well into six figures a year, at least gross, not net in some cases. But anyway, they're the top artists. But, and I quote, look at this. Chapter 5 looks at the online art market and the rapid evolution of sales in 2021. The chapter shows how the dealer sector shifted sales online in 2020 and at the development of online viewing rooms, OVRs. It goes on to talk about how profound the OVRs, look at the 2020 online sales versus the rest of the years. Is that insane or what? Um, you know, all COVID driven. But anyway, this report is awesome. I want you guys to check it out. But the point is, do you know what an OVR is? It is a snooty way of saying a Zoom call. Exactly what we're on right now. So these, these high-end galleries, their agents, sometimes it's Sotheby's, sometimes it's Gagosian or any of the other big names that you know, they get the salesperson and or the artist in a Zoom they get the high net worth individual on the other end of the Zoom. They call it an online viewing room. They have a personalized show for them. They are able to ask whatever questions they want. The artist does uh, their interpretation, uh, their, you know, their uh, inspiration on the piece and all the rest of it. You get to know the artist. Uh, everyone's got a drink in their hand. And then the high net worth individual bought tremendous amounts of art uh, as a result of doing this in 2020. So my point is, whether it's the one-to-one -one or the one-to-many, the entire art selling world is trying to figure out how to leverage live video to grow their business. And it is, it is profound, profound. And just to give you a couple more spins on this, um, Matthew, again, longtime customer, really good friend, had a show in the middle of COVID. It was already booked. The gallery was like, look, we can only have like 10 people in here, but you can have the show. Everyone's gonna have to wear masks, all that, right? And obviously no one could come to the show because COVID. I mean, this was July 24th of last year. So, you know, lockdowns were still fierce. And what do we do? He had the gallery show. Whoever could come to the show came to the show. And the next day, he turned the cameras on, walked right through the show, right like you were at the show. And you could see which pieces got the red dot. And this was exactly hanging. This is so close to the actual experience of his actual gallery show. And guess what? People were asking questions and they were interacting. And everyone that couldn't travel because of COVID felt like they were actually at the show with him. 
and he ended up selling uh, some additional pieces that he did not sell it overnight, right? And people were sending offers and all the rest, and you gotta you gotta interact and bond with him. So there's literally there's so many different permutations of what this can look like and how this can go. And you know, I know already that almost none of you have run him. I know that probably for many of you, this is the first time that you've ever even heard about it. Uh, I know for many, you are terrified of being on video. I know for many, uh, you've never done a very good job of actually holding up your work and merchandising it in your lives, okay? Because I've seen your Instagram accounts, 2D image after 2D image after 2D image, okay? You guys aren't selling 2D images. Do you know what you're selling? You're selling something that can hang on the wall, okay? That has a wire on the back and hangs on the wall. But what is your Instagram account filled with? 2D image after 2D image after 2D image, right? So anyway, I, I say all that to say, and I'm going to tell you guys this before anyone else gets to know. I have, I'm, I, it's not hyperbole, okay? I've never seen results uh, in my entire life of doing this like I have seen from these shows. We have multiple different customers, okay? Some huge following, some small following, some in between. They've, they hate video too. They're terrified of public speaking too. Turns out they don't have a bunch of fancy equipment aside from the one thing that everyone has, okay? And they've been running these things and the results that they're getting in one show are eclipsing the results that they've gotten in six months of marketing and regular sales, even with our tutelage the year previous. It is insane how effective these are. And I realize, you know, there's the Christian parable. It's not about religion, but you know, the feed, uh, give a man a fish and he eats for a day teach a man to fish and you know they, they can feed themselves for a lifetime or however I'm hacking that that's what I'm seeing by these shows okay my sincere hope is that you guys would all be like this guy knows what he's talking about it sounds like sort of and these live art shows seem like a big deal and if he's telling me that I should be running one I probably should and what does everyone say to me what's the best time to run one Patrick and I don't have enough followers and I don't know about the equipment and I don't have enough inventory and this and that and the other and everything else if I was teaching you how to ride a bike do you know what we would do? We'd take the bike out of the garage, we'd go down the driveway, put it on the street, start riding it, probably fall down a couple of times, smile a little bit at the end, and maybe get the hang of it. So do you know what you don't have to worry about when you run your first one? What time of day to run one? What kind of equipment you have? Whether or not you have the right inventory? Whether or not you have the best bike in the history of bikes? Who's gonna be on the street when you're riding the bikes? I mean, obviously not if it's a traffic street. When you run hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these, uh, in, in sharp contrast to everyone else, you learn things, okay? You learn things, you get better. This page is so simple to create, I can't even begin to tell you. You grab a bucket of images, okay? You drop them all at once, it instantaneously outputs the grid of all of the images, okay? It takes two seconds, not individual uploads, not anything else, our thing will resize them, drop them, you have the grid. Then, you title, you have price. If that's all you wanna have in your show, great. Then you can title price. If you want to put sizes, fantastic. If you want to put a little description, fantastic. Then you run the show and you have a web page to send them to. Not only do you have a web page to send them to, if somebody clicks a buy now button, you get this little slide out shopping cart. They fill it in, they click pay now, the transaction's done, instantaneously the thing goes to sold. Because what happens is that sometimes you'll get two people fighting over a piece and then you've got to play favorites and then you're the bad guy. Like, I don't want you to be the bad guy. Nobody likes being the bad guy. And then you have a page after the fact where the show lives so that when you email people like, hey, you missed my show, there's still some pieces left, you can come check it out. So that's our newest feature. We're working on our attention. We're doing that on a regular basis, quotidian, daily, okay? We know that we know the uh, business model, selling direct. We're building our collector list and we're taking care of it. We're working on our three ways to sell art. That top block is everything else. It's everything else. Let's say you have a retail gallery, okay, that is, um, you know, still selling your stuff, still giving you income. Fantastic, I love the income, but it's gotta be in addition to everything else, okay? Um, so too, if you have an online gallery, Saatchi, Redbubble, Etsy, Fine Art America, I don't care what it is, very few people do good on any of those things, uh, admittedly, but it's okay. You can, if, the, if they're working, as long as it's on top of everything else. You do this, and then we throw in the P word, okay? Little perspective here, this is important. Week in, week out, I talk to hundreds, do you know how many are in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s? You talk to enough people like that, you start to realize things. One, you guys all have decades left, God willing, to get this right, okay? To get that pyramid right, to build a business that will actually give you income and grow year over year, okay? And you guys don't go through midlife crises. 
you know, you don't, you're not you're not all of a sudden an artist or a photographer and then you decide in your 40, like, I'm going to go be a tax accountant, right? Like, th these people that I talk to, they've been artists their entire lives. You don't, you, you don't ever stop. So have the perspective of how long you have to get this right. And you guys, it's not a sales pitch. This pyramid is the difference between whether or not you're going into a fight with both hands up or both of your hands tied behind your back. Because if you're not selling direct and you're not building the collector list uh, and you don't have your art up on a website, it is so difficult to make it in this industry, I can't even begin to tell you. And as a final on the perspective, like, you know, again, talk to you guys, hundreds of you guys, okay? I can read your mail. I know none of you are marketing consistently. I know none of you have ever marketed consistently for the most part. Marketing an artist is like gym memberships at the beginning of the year. Everyone signs up to the gym membership and they're so fired up about it. This is gonna be my year. Come February 15th, the cold weather comes in and you're going to the gym like once a month, right? That's what marketing is to most artists and photographers. You don't ever do it consistently. So I need to teach you to do it consistently if you're gonna be successful. And there's a lot that you need to learn in order to do good effective marketing. And let me tell you, if you've never done that and if you've never learned it, first year totally sucks. You're pulling your hair out of your head. There's a bunch of stuff you have to learn, which is not fun, but what? If you have the perspective of how long you have to get this right, it is, it is all well, well worth the effort and time to learn because you can build an incredible business. And that's the ball game. That's my presentation. All right, everybody, welcome back. That was Patrick. If you joined uh, during that presentation, you might need kind of a reset on who everybody is, what's going on. That was Patrick. He's the head of our marketing department. Uh, my name is Taylor. I'm an artist consultant on the team. This is an art business workshop. Uh, that was Patrick's thoughts on the strat primarily the strategy that he's, he's most excited about right now, the live art show. Um, what we're going to do from here is go into uh, some frequently asked questions about art storefronts. I know a lot of people come uh, when they see that it's a Q&A, and uh, a lot of people have the same questions over and over because there's just a few things that, that come to mind right away. Um, I'm going to answer what I see as the, the kind of most commonly asked questions. As I'm doing this though, if it spins off some other questions in your mind, like, okay, but what about this? Or what about that situation? Um, ask me, leave that in the chat. Uh, I'll round up through the chat. You can also raise your hand in Zoom here if you'd like to be unmuted. If you don't wanna kind of figure out how to type your thoughts, you just wanna talk. Um, you can also ask me for any advice to do with your art business, okay? That's what I do all day for our members in Zoom like this. Um, just working one-on-one -on -one with them, uh, building their art businesses, addressing you know, concerns about, should I be focusing on this or that with my business? What about the holidays coming up? So uh, if you do have a specific challenge in mind that you feel like uh, is in your way, preventing you from growing right now, something you don't have the answer to, perhaps if you did have the answer, you could uh, take some steps, get moving, ask me about it, right? Pick my brain about it while we're here. Uh, and otherwise, let's get into uh, some of those frequently asked questions. I'll get the screen share going, just so we can kind of center around one question at a time. Let's start off in a very basic space here. What is art storefronts in my, in my words, at least? You probably have perhaps a okay to good idea of what art storefronts is. Um, so I will, I will put it in my own words. Art storefronts is a membership for artists that includes website software, a website uh, designed to sell art specifically, as well as uh, a expansive marketing program that is uh, totally hands-on and active and puts you in touch with consultants. So it is uh, the software to build a business and all the strategy to build an art business. Okay, that's, that's the simple way. We're gonna dig into it further from there with this series of questions that come up next, okay? It's website software. So how is it different from website companies like Squarespace? In two ways, first of all, the entire marketing program, right? The whole second half of the membership is not available with, with traditional website companies where uh, something like Squarespace is just there to uh, get you outfitted with a uh, attractive website, good to go, uh, build the business on your time, right? That is your job. And that's where you end up with the situation where, you know, every artist can have a website. What good is that doing anymore? It's not generating any sales because uh, it is so simple to get a website. It's, it's simple to get a great looking website at this point, right? It used to even be um, some level of difficulty to get a good looking website uh, aesthetically, pretty simple now. Uh, but at the same time, websites have really become uh, in the art market, basically like a glorified business card where it's like somewhere to showcase your art for people that want to see what it looks like, 
but who's actually checking out, re you know, reliably, not generating a lot of sales. Um, so, so the biggest way that we're different from something like Squarespace is that they're not offering any support specifically for artists. Uh, there is no marketing program. There's no consultants there. Uh, they're not helping you build a business. They're just kind of giving you the software. If you need a basic website, that's where you can get it. Um, so what we did is we took um, our own approach to building website software, but we, we built it only for selling artwork. For, for fine art, for photography, for sculpture, uh, and that's it. And when you do that, uh, the, the software comes out quite a bit different than somewhere like uh, Squarespace or the other website providers um, in that we didn't need to build generic software. We didn't need to design features that can work for any e-commerce product like you get at other companies uh, that need to support a, a massive customer base of any type of business. You could be selling anything with their software and they need to, uh, when they're thinking about developing features, uh, that's where they're thinking, is this gonna be useful to almost any business? Because if it's not, we're wasting our time, right? We're trying to make software for everyone. So it needs to apply to everyone. So that's where you're gonna get like, what about like a color search? that artists would really appreciate a way to filter products by the colors inside of them in those uh, pieces. Interior designers love that because it allows them to shortcut to, does this artist have the type of work I'm looking for? As well as individual consumers, I already know my, my paint color over here. Uh, I'm looking for a warm piece. I'm certainly looking for a warm piece. So let me pick the, the reds and the oranges and the yellows here and see what this artist has. You suggest something like that to a generic website company, and it's like, that would be super cool. That would be very cool for artists, but our software is for everyone. Uh, that would affect 2% of our, of our clients. We can't spend any time developing that if it's only going to go out and be useful for 2% of our clients. Uh, at Art Storefronts, we, we only design our software for artists, so you're going to get a ridiculous amount of art selling features because it's the only thing our developers are working on, specifically how to sell artwork online. Uh, there is no bigger picture than that. We are uh, art selling software. And that's where you're gonna pick up a lot of like the, the most advanced uh, features in the art market available to individual artists on art storefronts like augmented reality, where you can have your, your customers use their phone and project your artwork on their wall uh, and view it and resize it and dial in exactly what it's going to feel like in their space. That was for a long time kind of the, the most coveted high-end, most advanced art selling technology. Uh, and it's available to individual artists on art storefronts instead of just massive platforms like art.com uh, because that's where our focus is. That's all that we're designing the software for is selling art. Uh, so quite a bit different at the end of the day, quite a bit different. All right, so let's say we're at that point. The next thing you're probably going to be thinking is, is this a marketplace then? How is this different from Etsy or Fine Art America? We're not a marketplace at all, essentially. So there, there, there's no comparison um, in that. There is no central place to shop for all of the work that our members make. There is no, no central database, no homepage for that. Uh, it is individual websites for individual artists running their own business. We don't sell the artwork as art storefronts. Um, we, it's not this type of marketplace layout where it's like you list your art with the marketplace. If it sells on the marketplace, you get your cut. Not like that at all. This is your own business, your own website for your business. Uh, you keep the vast majority of every sale because it's your sale. And most importantly, you get all of the uh, customer information to do with those sales because it is your business. That's that's why you should not want to be on marketplaces any longer than you have to be. They can work, right? So it's not something to purely avoid, but it is something to steer away from for that big fact that it's very difficult to build collectors and build, uh, frankly, a legitimate, consistent business without getting lead and customer information with a lead being someone that hasn't purchased yet but is interested and your customer information being you know their address and their email address and their phone number and all those sorts of things uh, any business really needs a database of, of these two pools of information leads and customers uh, and you often don't get that on marketplaces which i think is a massive massive setback and it keeps you in this place where you're really relying on uh, the marketplace positioning you well in search results and things like that. And it opens you up to a lot of risk where 
if they're to change how their search algorithms work, and all of a sudden you're not on the second page anymore for a certain search term, you're on the, the 18th page, you know, that could knock out your whole business. So I don't like personally how marketplaces uh, prop you up on, on some pretty uneven stilts there, or if it's working, you're, you're never really sleeping that well at night, knowing that you have a business 10 years from now. It's more like it's just working well right now. Uh, so anyways, we designed our storefronts to be uh, not like that at all, right? So no, no shaky stilts there. Um, we want you guys building your businesses on uh, some serious foundation on, on rock. Uh, and the way to do that is to treat your art like the real business that it is. And that entails doing your marketing, having a marketing strategy, uh, having your own website where you collect all the sales yourself and you get all of the information, uh, not, not lending that, not sharing that with any other third parties. So how does the marketing program work? I think you have a good idea of the website software. How does the marketing program work? There's basically three uh, silos to it, three tiers, three elements to it. There is uh, the playbooks, the workshops, and the community. And altogether, this is like um, a five-year project, five, six-year project, uh, making it uh, become something that actually works, that works very well, right? So we've really perfected how many elements does there need to be and, and what should be inside those elements. Uh, the playbooks is basically the strategy. So it's um, not like, uh, because there's a lot, of, a lot of people trying to sell artists, you know, like a $1,000 uh, set of PDFs or like, you know, it's, it's, it's a thousand bucks and it's six courses that teach you how to interface with galleries or something like that. That's what I'd call like a static resource for you where someone created some content and now they're just charging you to access that content so straight, you know, straightforward, pretty simple. Um, this is a dynamic marketing program where all of our guides are being updated year after year after year after year to become better and better and better. And it's also not any sort of limited amount of information. It's not like we have articles on certain themes. Uh, it is nothing less than a daily strategy, a daily strategy. So I'll show you. This is the art marketing calendar for our members for last month, for August. So like I said, there's not like a, some articles for you. It is Monday, August 2nd. You need to go live on Instagram, click go to tasks, and we'll tell you all about what you should be doing, what you should be showing on video. Uh, Tuesday, if you need to generate some leads, go to tasks, and we'll tell you exactly how to do that. Wednesday the 4th, it's time to send your audience an email go to tasks and we'll tell you what email to send them um, and so on down the list. And you see, okay, it was time to do a giveaway. Then it was time to run an end of summer sale. This is a big opportunity that most artists miss out on. Later in the month, it was time to run a live art show. So you go to tasks and see, okay, I have no idea how to run a live art show. Follow all the playbooks. It's all linked right here. If you go down to the, uh, the live art show, you open up the live art show playbook. That'll detail everything for you. So I hope that kind of gets the point across here that you're, you're not buying into some kind of archive of old blog posts that will teach you a couple things. You're buying into exactly what to do every single day of every year. And not just recommending, you know, when we say, uh, you know, run an end of summer sale, we're not just suggesting that to you and saying, that'd be a good thing to do. We're saying, you need to announce your end of summer sale. So you're going to need to send an email announcing it. When you send that email, use this subject line. We've been doing these sales for five years and we know this is the subject line that people open the most. Write the email in this fashion. You can tweak it if you wanna get your own voice in there, but keep the basic structure just like this because this is what we know works. Run it for this many days. On the last day, you wanna remind people that it's gonna end. So send them this email and post this on Instagram and post this on Facebook. Um, that's how expansive it is. It's, it's exactly what to do. And you can see what this does is keeps our members actually doing marketing. This is what a month looks like for a thriving art business. It has a lot on it. It has a lot to be done because running a, a business involves a lot of marketing. Um, the thing that takes the most time, I think that's another one of the FAQs here. How much time does it all take? Not nearly as much as you would think, because what most of the time in marketing is spent on is basically thinking about what to do and 
wasting time on things that don't work. So when you remove just needing to think about what to do, all of a sudden, almost all of that time is gone. It's shocking how much marketing time is spent in that thinking stage, researching, watching YouTube videos that have like conflicting information, seeing a tweet about someone that says this worked for them and thinking, does that work for me? Most of the time is spent in this sort of inefficient space where you're just trying to figure out, should I be doing something this week? Is there an opportunity here or not? Uh, so our members shortcut past all of that and just look, you know, we're at the 18th here. It's time to do this day's task or here we go. World photography day. What do they recommend I do for that? Oh, I should post a quick message on social media. Here's what I'm going to do. It's very quick. So most of our members, we've pulled them um, annually on how much time they spent on marketing. And uh, the average is typically about five hours a week. So I hope that's, it's not nothing. It's five hours a week, but I hope that's less than you are fearing perhaps. Um, that's really all it takes to execute on this daily strategy. Another popular question is gonna be how does print fulfillment work, right? So how, uh, how does my print store run? Am I doing a lot of shipping myself? You can basically approach print fulfillment in any way you'd like. You can do it all yourself. If, if part of your passion in the industry is producing your own prints, you can do that. If you have a local printer you have a great relationship with, you can stitch up to them, continue to use them, or you can take advantage of our automated fulfillment partners, which is what uh, the vast majority of our members choose to do for the, the efficiency gains that I'm about to describe. Um, we have two partners in the US for the East Coast and the West Coast. On the West Coast, it's Bay Photo. You may have heard of them. On the East Coast, it's Graphic Dimensions. When you connect to one of these partners, how it works is, when an order for a print comes in on your website, uh, you are paid immediately. And the order fires off to your fulfillment partner who gets to work on it, prints it, quality checks it, packages it in a box with your logo on it, and ships it to the buyer. So essentially, it is completely hands off. There is, there is nothing to be done. You receive orders. You can go on vacation for a month, and you'll be selling work the whole time. It's shipping out without you. Uh, it is not a hands-on process at all. Uh, so we, we did that very intentionally because we need to have solutions for when you scale the heck out of your business, right? So early on, you can handle printing your own work as a hobby or as a passion. But if you get as successful as we're pushing all of our members to get well beyond six figures, the order volume increases to a point where you cannot be interacting with every order. It just will not scale properly. You can't be driving around town and boxing things and getting packaging supplies and you know typing in addresses and figuring out costs and things like that. You need an automated solution. Uh, so that's kind of what comes with the, the software day one is the same solution you would need if your business was a thousand times more successful than it is today. Uh, and in that way, this will never be a concern about growing to a point where you have trouble keeping up with the orders. It's already solved. So like I said, you can approach it however you like. It is not uh, required to use automated fulfillment, but most of our members choose to do it. Um, that's how it works. <clears throat> By the way, the other nice part of that is that these are deep relationships. These are, are close relationships. When I talk about we use Bay Photo, that's not just like um, a casual connection. Uh, our, our teams are, are deeply integrated and in speaking to each other. In fact, we serve as your support for Bay Photo once you're connected to them, right? So if anything goes wrong, like uh, there's some kind of uh, reason that a, a logistical reason a print doesn't show up or it shows up damaged for some reason, has water damage as, as we're, we're dealing with potentially right now as a result of the, the weather activities in the US. Um, you know, that question of what do I do? How do I, how do I fix this? It's really simple because you contact us. We're your support for them. You just tell us what happened. We go work with Bay Photo and just let you know what the resolution is. Like, uh, okay, they sent another one. You're good to go. Uh, we deal with all the support for you so that, like I said, you're not interacting with your fulfillment uh, too much. You need to be focused on marketing and, of course, creating work. Uh, how many pieces do I need to get started? My uh, not joking answer for this, although everyone laughs, is one. 
you need one art piece to get started with art storefronts. And the reason for that is that most people, uh, most artists think in terms of collections while art consumers think in terms of individual pieces. So uh, what, and this is kind of a free takeaway for you is to not think about your marketing in terms of collections of pieces at all. Think about each piece as its own marketing campaign, right? So you should be, when you create a new piece, teasing people, about what you're working on, what the inspiration is, how the process is going. For photographers, this means cluing people in when you're out in the field, not just after you've gotten the photo, but while you're in the process of taking photos. Your audience should already know about a piece before it's finished. Uh, then it's revealing it to them. There's some special tactical to do with how to properly reveal a new product. Um, and then there's kind of a, a one month tail several week tail to after you've put it on the website for the first time where you're really promoting it heavily and doing some fun stuff with it. Um, you wanna do that with each new release because when you're getting into daily marketing, you're gonna need a lot of content. You're gonna need a lot of things to talk about. So if you upload 250 or 600 pieces onto art storefronts on day one, you're kind of sucking all the air out of your marketing plans because they're just kind of all there go have at it. I would much rather you upload just 10, 20, 30 pieces, a, a low amount, so that you can start to work through them in a marketing sense. You've probably never properly marketed them on an individual basis, told those stories, uh, let people in uh, on an intimate level onto each piece individually. Uh, so like I said, one piece is the minimum you need to get started because that's all you're gonna be focusing on, whether you have one piece or a thousand. Uh, it does start with the promotion of one piece. So don't let that hold you back. Uh, there, there is no such thing as, I'd be a better fit if I had more work. Uh, that's, that's not uh, a thing. What type of person is most successful on art storefronts? The kind of cute answer I have for you is basically the type of person that would be watching me right now is a good fit for art storefronts. If you are in this session or listening to my words for more than a second, you're probably a good fit because it means that you care enough about your art business to actually seek out, you know, how to, how to improve it, to learn from people, to try to put some learnings into practice, to try to get help. Uh, honestly, that sounds simple, but it is not nearly the, the most common thing we see from artists. The most common thing we see is people that are very, very disengaged with the business of their artwork because they're primarily just creating it for the passion of, of the artwork, but not really tapped into the business side enough to even seek out information on how to, how to do things properly. Um, so I would say someone that is a good fit for our storefronts and is likely to be successful is someone that is pretty interested in building a business with their artwork. Uh, they are switched on to the need to do that, to the reality that businesses need to do marketing need to. There's no business that would ever launch with, with no intention of doing marketing uh, and hope to succeed. So if you're really kind of dialed into that, that okay, I have the work, I'm, I'm blowing it on the marketing. I need someone to tell me uh, what are the right things to do to turn this work into uh, fans and then the fans into buyers and then the buyers into collectors. If you could just get me that information, I'll run with it and I'll make it happen, right? That's going to be someone that's a good fit. Uh, who's going to be not likely to be successful. That's gonna be kind of inverting all of that. It's gonna be someone that is highly resistant to the idea that they would ever need to do marketing. Okay, I'm sorry if this applies to you and you're here. Um, this is a kind of a common archetype for artists is the idea that uh, no, I am the creative source for the work, but I'm not on this earth to be uh, doing any business, right? That makes it so difficult to generate sales. That is a great path to go down if your work is uh, fulfilling for you creatively and you're happy to keep it that way, right? There's, there's no need for anyone that considers themselves an artist to have to spend time marketing. That becomes a necessity if you're trying to sell it, right? If you're realistically trying to generate income and consistent revenue, then you must market your own work. Right, it is a necessity to treat it like a business. Uh, if it is purely for creative satisfaction, exploration for you, I'm not going to say the word hobby, but but basically a hobby. Um, then of course you don't need to waste your time marketing anything because it's not your goal anyways to sell it. Uh, so like I said, someone that's going to be not as successful is someone that struggles with that need. 
right? That's, that's really pushing against it and saying, my goal is going to be to do the absolute least amount on the computer as possible because uh, I need to be painting more. Um, will help you do the least amount possible, but that least amount, like I said, is still five hours a week. It's still some work, it's still some effort. Um, so I gotta warn you that you need to see that, that opportunity there and see that that's what's needed, that's what's missing, that's why your audience isn't growing. Um, if you're fired up by, okay, I'll do the work, but I won't waste my time, right? I'll finally be doing the right work and in touch with the right people. Um, that's where I'm starting to think that you're gonna be very successful with us. The other thing I think is important is to be pretty open-minded technologically. And that is very different from being skilled technologically. So some of our most uh, successful members with, with certain strategies had no idea before following our playbooks how to do anything like going live on Instagram to showcase some work and run a sale. You know, this is these are people that would never do that until we told them no, you should do this. And here's how you do it. Watch our videos, then copy it and do it on your own. Um, so you don't need technical proficiency. You need kind of that willingness to say, I don't know how to do some things, but if the guide is good enough, I can follow it. I'll follow it, right? If the guide is clear enough, which is what we work really hard on, uh, I will figure this out and I'll do it, right? So that, so that open-mindedness about technology is really useful because marketing is a mm, kind of dynamic, technical type of situation where uh, the technologies change, the opportunities change, the channels change. Email was like the number one thing. Now it's like number two or number three thing. Uh, so that adaptiveness, okay, what's, what's a big deal now? This over here, I'll go over there. I'll show my art over there, sure. Uh, that, that is a good signal of success as well. Where can I see some members talking about their experiences? Um, all over the place, you can Google Art Storefronts Reviews. Uh, I like our Facebook. Uh, reviews. If you go to our Facebook page, um, go to the reviews tab here. I like coming in here because everyone is uh, kind of connected to their profile. So it's really easy to contact people in here. If you want to come in here, see a review that intrigues you, you can actually reach out, message that person, ask them more, ask follow-up questions. I think that's the best way to vet any business is to uh, speak to existing customers uh, in detail. And how can I get a guided tour? So kind of like a next step situation, like, okay, that all sounds good, but I'd like to see it in person. You know, I'd like to see it in greater detail, not in person, but in greater detail. Uh, to do that, you'll just need to request a demo that'll put you in touch with our outreach team. Uh, you'll get on the call with them and it's pretty open-ended where it's like, what, what are you looking for? You know, you'll bring out, I'd like to see the website software. I'd like to see the marketing program or I'd like to just sign up, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm in. Um, Request a demo. You can also leave your email address in the chat at any time, and we'll kind of do the legwork for you of reaching out, setting something up with you. But that's that's how it works. Um, but to get back to how the marketing program works, I realized I got a little excited and straight away uh, talking about the art marketing calendar. The other two prongs of the marketing program, in addition to all the information and strategy you find here, is the workshops and the community. The workshops are six days a week throughout the week, uh, and they are on Zoom like this, and they're for a variety of topics. So you look at what's, you know, what's, what's in your way today. Um, if it's a technical issue, come to a tech support workshop. We have those five days a week. If it's a question to do with MailChimp or Facebook ads or Facebook or Instagram, the, the interface looks weird, or you need help posting a story for the first time, or you've heard of Instagram Reels, but you're not sure if that's a good idea, we have sessions for that. If you have a big picture strategy question, you wanna get in touch with me about you know, an art show opportunity you have or a licensing opportunity you have, and you wanna know, is this a good deal? How can I make the most of this show? You know, someone got me in a cafe, but I'm not sure this or that. Uh, we have sessions for that. Those are called office hours. We have sessions all throughout the week, every week that put you in touch with our team, all sorts of different people on our team with different expertise. It's pretty easy to figure out where you should be heading based on what you'd like. Um, so, so that is an important part of the dynamic element of it that I mentioned before is like I said, this is not old articles here that you're paying to access. You are in touch with all sorts of consultants like me every week, week after week, 
right? So we check in and we say, okay, last time you told me about this opportunity you had, I gave you some advice. Did you go for it? And you say, I did go for it. And here's, you know, we're getting started and here's what's happened so far. And then, you know, I come back and say, okay, very cool. That, that reminds me, you should probably do this to make the most of it. Uh, it's an ongoing relationship week after week, checking in what happened with that? How is that going? Uh, that's very powerful, very special, I think. And then lastly, the community arm is uh, our, our group here, Small Wins. This is our members only Facebook community. And we've done a lot to try to facilitate um, very useful conversations in here for you. You can see we're running a, a contest right now. So what you'll see as you go through here is our members supporting each other, asking each other for help, asking each other for advice, who's done, you know, an art show where you have to have a tent, what did you, you know, this or that, you know, getting really into the nitty gritty, talking shop with each other. Um, this is a really powerful resource, I think, as well. So you come to the workshops when you need marketing experts, and you go into the Facebook group when you need uh, artist experts, mentors, people that you connect with because they've sold, you know, $200,000 of art, and you have a question that they could help with. Um, what this all adds up to is that no question ever goes unanswered. You have mentors a lot of times for the first time. A lot of times artists are operating alone on an island with their business. They are the only person in the arts, perhaps in their family or friend, or friend group. This happens kind of a lot. And you end up feeling a little isolated, uh, having to make up everything on your own, make the most of it, keep telling people that you know it's going to grow and grow. Uh, as compared to plugging into a system like this, where you have consultants like me, you have mentors like people in the group, uh, I think it's a, a radical game-changing uh, solution. So I hope that covers uh, what I missed on how to describe what the marketing program is. Alrighty, um, that's all I have prepared for you. We'll move to the Q&A now. So give me a second to catch up on the chat. I, I haven't been reading. Uh, while I've been talking. Let me take a look at what you've been talking about. Like I said, uh, if you have any spin-off questions, leave them in the chat, raise your hand in Zoom. I'd be happy to help you uh, specifically. Let me see what we got going on. Je Jessica asked about selling digital art. Would you print digital art out and frame them to have a live art chat? Absolutely. So we have plenty of digital artists on the platform. Uh, the, the process is uh, hardly different than painters, to be honest. You're just uh, working on a different medium. You're working on tablet rather than canvas. All of it kind of works the same. Sorry if you hear this truck backing up outside. The marketing is, is very similar because you've got process too. It's not, it's not paint and brush. Um, it is tablet and pen, uh, and illuminating that process is a big part of the marketing. When it comes to selling the products, you sell all the same products. You sell prints, you sell limited editions that are signed, you sell merch items like tote bags. Um, you don't have originals unless you go the NFT route, which I could talk to you about, but largely the business is the same whether the work is digital or not. Josh is asking, aside from printing out photographs, are there other types of one-to-many Zoom calls that can work? For instance, a sculptor or painter can show something being created. Is there something similar that works for a photographer? Yes, it is uh, live streams from the field talking through how you're translating a real setting into a specific capture, right? So this is something photographers should be doing is doing marketing before the photos are shot, not just afterwards, hey, I went to, uh, I went to Prague and got this great photo. Uh, you should be live from Prague frequently saying, I'm out, I woke up at 5 a.m. this morning to get the bridge shot that I want. Let me talk you through what I'm looking for, how I decided on this positioning. And later today, I'll show you the photo that I got, at least my favorite, or perhaps I'll show you a couple and you can let me know what you think, or perhaps I'll show you a black and white and a color and you can vote on uh, which finish I should do. You know, in fact, maybe I'll go live again later and I'll show you some of the post-production that I do on these photos to take it from a really good 
core capture into a beautiful finished art piece. I'll fill you in on, on what that post-production looks like. Uh, so that's kind of the, the marketing approach for uh, one to many on the photography, photography side is digging in the process, uh, digging into that mysterious element, the reason people follow photographers and are interested in photography, that mysterious element of anyone can go to a place where a photo is taken, uh, but they would not walk away with the same images. They wouldn't walk away with anything they were particularly proud of. So how do you do it, right? How come you went to the same place that I did? You got that image, I got these on my phone, why are you so much better, right? So kind of illuminating that mystery uh, is an important part on providing your audience with entertainment value. This is something that's missing. I wanna show you guys a uh, kind of stunning image here. Let me pull this up. This is to do with Instagram marketing. Okay. What I'm about to talk about is, is kind of where most artists are going wrong on Instagram. Likely most people here are, are doing a similar thing. There we go. All right, I wanna show you this. Stop posting static images of your artwork forever. <laughs> stop, stop only posting that endlessly. Okay, this is what a lot of artists are, are screwing up with their profiles is they are totally missing that they need to be providing entertainment, not just this is what my work looks like, this is what my work looks like, this is what my work looks like. Uh, so this is a member that we worked with a lot on getting some sales activity happening. And I want to show you the difference that it made when he started following uh, one of our strategies It happened to be the live art show strategy, but it wasn't uh, specifically that that worked. It was that we broke this cycle of endlessly posting static images of the work, okay? Uh, plain uh, images, some basic description, a sentence per. What this is doing is showing the awesome artwork, but not really giving the followers the emotional connection that they're gonna need to make a purchase because people purchase artwork um, because they love it aesthetically, but a big piece of that component of, of when do they actually decide to invest in it, not just enjoy looking at it, but, but get it in their home, that requires an emotional connection with the artist. And this is something no one's really working to provide to enhance the emotional connection with the artist. If you're posting these static shots over and over, you're not gonna get there with it, right? So, so throughout all of these weeks of posting, no sales were generated, despite in all of these posts saying, this print's available on my website. Uh, over here, I'm selling this one today, or maybe this one's at a discount today. Uh, it didn't happen. It wasn't there. There wasn't that sense that the audience needs to support this person because they're such a big fan of what they're doing. Uh, he appeared on video in his studio, showing uh, his work, talking about it in, uh, out loud, you're, you're meeting him, you're seeing it, you're seeing what he's passionate about in his own images, what he loves about them. He's showing the products. So suddenly it moves from this kind of flat, abstract idea of a product into kind of a real world. This is what I sell. This is an acrylic print and it's ready to hang. This is what I sell. I also sell canvas prints. This is what they look like. Um, it's revolutionary. It's revolutionary to start taking on the responsibility of being visible as the artist, uh, entertaining your audience. So anyways, when we go back to that question about what to be doing as a photographer, it is not this, right? It is not just posting your images and figuring eventually, I don't know, I don't, I'm not even really sure what the steps mentally are. It's just like eventually perhaps they'll start selling. Not, not good enough. You have to get out there and start making connections, make building relationships, getting people on your email list, giving them value, filling them in on, on what you think and feel about your work and how it's created to a point that they feel happy to support you, that they love the work they need it because they love you as well. It, it's an important part of it. Uh, so, so definitely shake things up, break the pattern and uh, don't just endlessly post your work. Of course, of course, posting the work is in the mix. That's not something to avoid. It's, it's in the mix. It's not the only thing you do, though. What else do we have? How do you build a marketing strategy, Donna asks. 
big question, but I'll answer it in terms of some uh, pillars. An effective marketing strategy will have a reliable way for you to get leads. So I wanna start there because a lot of the focus is on getting sales because that's obviously kind of where everyone wants to get to. That's the whole point of the marketing strategy is to sell the work. But most of cracking an effective marketing strategy is more about reliably getting yourself leads. That is people to join your mailing list. Once you can get hundreds of people regularly joining the list, Everything else can start to take care of itself, but you need to crack that first because in the process of cracking that, you will be um, solving a lot of the basic things like, okay, what's the value of my mailing list? It shouldn't just be because you get a newsletter four times a year or something like that. Uh, there should be more marketing coming along with that mailing list. Offers, new piece reveals, my collectors get access to my new work first, uh, sending out the the story behind my new piece next week, make sure you're on the list before I send it. Um, once, you've once you've solved how to get hundreds of people on the list, it gets a lot easier. Once they're on the list, you can really maximize that relationship too. A social media follow is nice to have, but it's a very light interaction as compared to a subscription to the mailing list. So a lot of our marketing strategy is designed around cracking this problem and getting very large email lists built, 10,000 plus subscribers, uh, because the conversion rates to those subscribers is, is far higher than social media audiences or Google searches or even Facebook ads. Um, anyways, that's one of the pillars. Make sure you have a way to generate leads and then make sure you have a way to warm them up, as I'd call it, which is to say, uh, get them closer to you, build the emotional connections and that they should not have to wait for a quarterly newsletter for that to take place. It should be being done weekly where they're getting value to their inbox every week from you. Value, not, not a sales pitch, but they're getting entertainment value. They're getting to know more about the work and see it in different ways, different detail. Um, warm them up. And then finally, third pillar, have a way to close sales. And that's not just to wait for it to happen. It's primarily to run the right sales during the year. So there are art buying times throughout the year. They're centered around holidays, typically. That's when the most artwork is purchased. So you really wanna make sure you're doing something, period. You're doing something to, to specifically go after that extra demand in the market. We talk a lot about the fourth quarter because that's the biggest art selling time of year and it starts October 1st. It's October, November, and December. There are so many holidays packed into that period that that's where a lot of our members uh, and non-members are earning you know, over 50% of their annual revenue. Uh, it's just in those three short months. So make sure you're doing something during that time to, to actually try to get at that demand. Um, so overall, generating leads, warming them up through valuable content, not just emailing them when you have something to sell, uh, and then knowing how to close orders, how to take those relationships and say, okay, you love the work, you love me, it is time to make a purchase. And I'm telling you that because I'm running a sale right now to coincide with Black Friday or something like that, or, or with Christmas or uh, Mother's Day is a major opportunity. Father's Day is a big opportunity. The, the end of summer sale was a big opportunity. Uh, participating in these moments throughout the year while most artists are letting them go by, giving people a reason to purchase. It's called urgency and it's really important. Most art sales are closed when there is some elements of urgency there. Uh, that can be a limited uh, quantity of works available can serve as urgency, like a limited edition, 10 only. That's a good urgency because it might run out and never be available again. Uh, and a discount is a great piece of urgency. Any other type of offer, like a free gift, uh, free consultation with me, um, free shipping, all of these things serve as urgency. They serve as reasons to say, uh, do not just plan to purchase my artwork sometime in the future, but that time never arrives plan to purchase it this week because I'm giving you an excellent reason to. Uh, so overall, that is the broad strokes of how a good marketing strategy is put together. You're generating leads, warming them up, and closing them. Donna asked about introverts. That's a great question. You're mentioning, you're hearing me mention a lot of like video content and things like that. This is very difficult for a lot of artists. It's not a good fit because you guys aren't sort of natural salespeople, to be honest. You're, you're not, you're not um, necessarily naturally equipped with the right personality to be a salesperson for your work. And that's why it's important 
not to get it twisted and think that that's what you need to be. Um, what you need to be is a transparent representative of your work to communicate process, um, inspiration, passion, how it all works to be visible, to be open, to be there as the person behind the account, not just the faceless artwork that is posted every day. Um, that's, that's what works for it. So when we're talking about the live art show, for example, I think that brings to mind the, the need to be very extroverted, but really it's a matter of showcasing the work and uh, just talking a little bit about it and letting people snap up the work to, to purchase it from there. I will say that going live or appearing on video is something that is a jump in the deep end situation. That's why you're gonna hear Patrick always refer to uh, the need to go live immediately, to, to create a video today after this session. By the time an hour from now hits, you need to have finished your first live stream. Because what we find is that nerves about appearing on video or going live uh, disappear after the first time, after the first time. So it doesn't take you know, 10, 10 miserable shows where you, you trudge through it. Uh, what we see time after time is we're advising people and trying to really force them like, this is gonna be great for your audience. They're gonna love it, so do it. It is always like they did it once and they're over it. And that was the same for us at Art Storefronts when we started to embrace a lot more Zoom sessions like this. That was last March or so. We really moved a lot of our consulting into video form like this. I didn't wanna do it. Patrick did not wanna appear on video, that's for sure. Um, but it only takes one and you're just over it. Uh, so I advise that for everyone, by the way, is, is, is shake those cobwebs off immediately if you are on board with the idea that you appearing visually in connection to your art is going to be a good thing overall, then uh, get to that immediately. That's something you can spend months avoiding, and it should be squashed immediately. You do it once, you see that was no big deal at all, and you're free to delete absolutely anything you want. That's another important piece is if you have any trepidation about it, just immediately delete it. Uh, that will still help you feel like you did it and you're a lot more comfortable for next time. Uh, Sherry asks, uh, after signing up, does it cost extra for automated printing with the printers? Is this an add-on? Not at all. There are no additional fees to do with the printing whatsoever. You know, it's not like a, a monthly fee. It's not like a per order fee or anything like that. The, the, it's, it, it's the same cost to you whether you print it yourself or use automated fulfillment. So that brings me to mention the pricing structure of art storefronts overall, just so you know. There's a few components to the pricing. There is a monthly fee similar to other website platforms where you have you know, a, a 40, 50, $60 fee for keeping the lights on on the website. Uh, that fee is determined on how many features you have equipped, how many features you have turned on. We have three different tiers of the website software based on what features you like, what you need access to. Uh, in addition to the monthly fee, you have a one-time membership fee, and that gives you access to the marketing program for life. So this is all paid once and then never again, so that that's not a factor of your ongoing sort of monthly payments or anything like that. You pay it once and then never again, that's for the marketing. The website software is covered month to month. You can also save a bunch if you pay annually on that, but it's your, your choice on that. And then finally, we have transaction fees on the work sold through the website. Those are like single digit percentages. This is not equivalent to like a commission fee in any way, since it is your business and your marketing. Um, there's a transaction fee on those pay on uh, the, the transactions through the website uh, only. If you sell something at an art show in person, you take cash, you take check, you take square, uh, all of that, uh, all business that's not run through our storefronts, there are zero transaction fees on. Uh, and of course, no limits to absolutely anything you can do with your art, uh, like you get with a lot of other bogus sort of artist solutions where it's like, we'll help you, but now you can't do this or that, or you can't go in galleries or you can't, you know, whatever. There's, there's nothing like that. Uh, it is completely your business. But for all those details, um, you can get in touch with uh, our outreach team, request a demo. They'll show you the three plans side by side with what comes with them and what the prices are for each. Um, there are certainly deals available to you if you mentioned that you came to this session, because like I said, uh, you guys are our VIPs. We emailed 
a whole lot of people with the invite to this session. You guys are the people that tuned in and kind of cared enough to, to learn something, to, to get some value, to ask some questions. So we will certainly be cutting you a deal if you want to sign up just because, uh, like I said before, just the act of coming to this suggests that you're going to be a really good fit and we want people that are going to be successful. Okay. What else are you guys wondering about? What do you need to know? I see it, James. Should see a uh, unmute prompt there. Can't hear you quite yet. You'll need to hit the unmute button on your screen. Patrick, gotcha. Patrick mentioned um a $250 markup on prints, I believe. Percent, Does that yeah. mean it cost 100 to to make a print? Uh, we would charge 250 um, uh, That math always increase of 100 That type of math always throws me off. Uh, it's beyond the cost, yes, so it would be 250 yeah. Thank you. That's correct. And um, how, like, I have a printer locally, and I brought my paintings physically there to be scanned and je clay print. How do we get to one of your print shops? Do we have it scanned locally and then send, send yes, it? So you'd, you'd upload the scanned images to the back end, and those images would connect with the printer. So when you receive an order for that piece, that's the image file that they use to print it. So yeah, you'd, you'd have them scanned locally. And then take yeah take those images upload them we can help you with that too the the details of how to do that they can also be photographed they don't have to be scanned but those are the two options scanning or photographing thanks james thank you taylor you're welcome and yeah james mentioned uh the markup uh, that is a suggestion a starting point you set your markups to whatever the heck you want what, whatever you want to do but if you need our advice that's where we find is a good starting point for, for new online businesses, or at least new to really taking the marketing seriously, is to price yourself at a 250% beyond cost markup uh, across the board, just to start. You will adjust this over time and we'll help you with that, but you need to start somewhere. That's where we recommend starting. That will make sure that your time spent on marketing has a good return. Uh, there's not, and this is another popular question I should be adding to that slide deck earlier, are there extra marketing costs? I should add that one in. People ask that a lot. There are not. The only extra marketing costs that you would uh, come into uh, in the process of building your business is going to be paid marketing, Facebook and Instagram ads, for example. And that is something we advise getting into in about a year into art storefronts because there are a lot of fundamentals to be mastered before you're ready to generate a lot of return off Facebook ads. It's really easy. They make it really easy to waste a lot of money on Facebook ads. If you've ever boosted posts and stuff like that, you'll know that they're very happy to take the money and you don't see a whole lot from it. Uh, so doing that right really requires mastering some fundamentals to say, you know, if Facebook is going to bring you extra attention, you're going to pay for the extra attention. Is your business ready for the extra attention? Because if you don't have a good lead generation strategy, a good romancing strategy, that's the warming them up thing I talked about, and a good sales strategy to close orders in place, it doesn't matter if Facebook sends you more attention. You, you're not equipped to do anything with it. You get more website visitors, that doesn't matter because people don't tend to buy on first visit to a website. Uh, you need to have that engine in place to say that when I get more attention from Facebook ads, I can handle it. I know what to do with it. So anyways, all that to say, it takes about a year to kind of get your business into a really good shape for paid advertising. There is nothing else that we recommend in any of our playbooks or that you'll find on the calendar that involves paying for marketing in any other way. What am I getting back to here? So, um, for, so, so there are no financial money-based costs to doing the marketing program. There is a lot of time cost, five hours a week, you want to pay yourself for that time, right? Uh, and the way to do that is make sure that every sale you close 
has a markup that covers enough profit so that you feel like every order is worth it. You're not so close to your cost that uh, you're barely generating any. Uh, so that's where that 250% number comes from is a really comfortable place to begin so that as you're doing this marketing, spending your time on this, uh, as the orders come in, they're all starting to recoup you in a, in a, in a proper way, at least what we identify as uh, kind of where you should be at in terms of profit. Uh, it is something to be raised from there as you build a business. So as you get a, a, a solid stream of followers coming to social media, leads coming onto your mailing list, people are opening your emails, interacting with you, relationships are being built, you can certainly support much higher of a markup percentage than 250. And that will be something to be done over time. We're going to 300, we're going to 350, we're trying 400. You'll also later down the line want to adjust things on a per product basis. You know, maybe, you know, at 300%, my acrylic prints come out to be prohibitively expensive. Uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll pull those back down to 250%, uh, while the paper prints, I'm happy to have at 300%, right? So, so the 250 is a one size fits all starting point. It's something to be tweaked from there. And that's something we spend a lot of time working with everyone on is, is how to go about that. If you hold the classes, is there a way for people to sign up and pay their fees from the website? Yes. So um, you can sell anything uh, with the software, including like tickets. You, you, you can say this item costs $600. Um, it's not connected to any auto fulfilled product. It's just a, a page where you collect $600 and in return, they get an email with like the Zoom link or whatever you need. Uh, so you can certainly facilitate that. I recommend looking up Betty Krauss, you may have heard. Uh, she's, she's kind of a hit on Instagram. Betty Krauss sells a whole lot of, of classes and courses through art storefronts. So if you check out her website and look at the, the navigation menu, you'll certainly find kind of how she structures it, how it looks, that, that'll be a pretty close approximation of, of you know exactly what it would look like oh there we go we got the link in the chat too if you need that <laughs> that reminds me yeah her name's betty franks now okay i need to remember that one she, she recently had a, a change of name Anything else for today? Anyone else that'd like to chat? Let's see. Oh, I see a Chandini. You should see the unmute button on your screen there. Hit that. There you go. Hey there. Oh, your, your mic isn't quite working, actually. I can't quite hear you. You got unmuted, but there was a lot of crackle, a lot of static. You may need to, to hit the chat there. <coughs> yeah, still a lot of crackle, I'm sorry. It's not coming through, I'm sorry. Feel free to email me or you can use the chat. I'll get back to you with whatever you need or post a demo as well in touch via phone. Hey James, all right. Um, I understand it's like about, it's a thousand dollars to start off with the lowest price website. Could you give me a rough idea of with memberships, et cetera, what the package would cost to get started? Um, I'm afraid to give you the wrong info on that. The, if you request a demo, you'll get the most accurate info. Like I said, I really am the, uh, from the inside of Art Storefronts as a marketing consultant. So I'm not really equipped with that precise information about you know, how that all works. But it looks like Juan said, um, we're gonna reach out to you today. So I'll get you that information, but um, to, you know, don't take this as cemented, but it would be the one-time fee there. And then I believe that package starts around $49 a month ongoing. Um, I think that would be 
the costs. But like I said, do confirm with the outreach team who are uh, the people to go to for that. I'm, I'm a little disconnected from that part of it. I'm more the, uh, the advice guy. So, so do check that out. Uh, Timothy asks, can we use our own website? Sort of, uh, I, I would say you probably won't want to because you'll see that as you're following the marketing program, it fully leverages our storefronts features. Uh, it's kind of integrated, it's all one thing where you'll have to be adapting a lot of the advice to say like, okay, well, I don't have that feature on my website, so I'm not sure how I'd run this campaign. I'll, I'll work around it. So ultimately people try it, but then kind of give up. They don't like that option. But what you can do is uh, keep your existing website, especially if you're using it for some, some reason where like you, you definitely wouldn't want to lose it. For example, you have a lot of blog posts on there or you have like a service side to your business that you want to keep in place or an extensive portfolio, something like that. What you can do in those cases is build out an art storefronts website. You're going to use it as the commerce part of your overall brand. Uh, and you can link to your art storefronts website from your other website in the navigation menu under an item that says like shop art, shop art. You, you click that on your website, it opens up the art storefronts website and that's all the commerce. So a lot of people choose to do that. They have, for some reason, they have another website that they wanna keep and then they just use the, the shop art type of implementation to get over to um, the art storefronts experience. Um, they have an art website template for free to use on Wix, have commerce. Been all for traffic. Yeah. So. Um, I'd say an extreme minority of people use a different commerce solution and just use our marketing program. That, that uh, is possible, it's viable. Um, but like I said, you'll, you'll kind of quickly switch over and see, okay, I'm not, I'm not getting all these features. Like I'm not getting, you know, I can't upsell pe people where after they check out with a large print, there's an offer there for like, what about if we throw in a tote bag for an extra 20 while you're here? There's a lot of these art specific features that uh, result in higher sales that you'll see in the marketing uh, advice. It's kind of all integrated there where it's, it's going to be kind of like, you know, I'm going to be missing some of the value of this if I don't have these features. So just a warning there, but uh, certainly a good idea to talk to the, the outreach team for that. What does your platform cost a cost breakdown? Like I said, request a demo for that uh, just because I'm not uh, exactly the right person. You know, I'm not a, a sort of sales representative for art storefronts or anything like that. Uh, but uh, Timothy will reach out to you, give you those details. You're welcome. Can't really run two sites. Is it okay to still have buttons for other non-store services images on an art storefront site? Certainly, do whatever, whatever you want, whatever you want. You can also build um, whatever pages you want in art storefronts. So we have a visual builder that we call the uh, experience page builder. It is basically just a a bunch of. Uh, uh, you, you, you may know what a visual builder is. It's a bunch of content blocks. It's like, you know, paragraph next to an image or a button or a big section with four images. And you can use this to build any type of informational page you'd like. So you can fully move over service parts of the business into the art storefront site. It doesn't need to be exclusively connected to art products. If you sell commissions, you can have an amazing sort of experience page about the process of, of selling, uh, of ordering a commission and how that all works. You can have service, uh, service photography happening over here. You can have whatever pages and as many as you'd like right on your art storefronts website. Or if you do have a page hosted elsewhere, uh, it can be in the navigation menu, but when they click on it, it pops off site and it goes to another uh, website, whatever that may be, it, it leads them somewhere else. So total, total flexibility uh, with that. Thanks, Eric. All right, last call, we'll call it there. April, let's get the uh, demo link in the chat. I wanna give you guys that link one more time. Request a demo if you do want to go one-on-one -on -one and, and see some stuff in greater detail, right? We can even put some of your artwork into an art storefronts template so you can get a, a, a very close approximation of what this all would look like, how this all would work. If you need to see more about certain elements of the print fulfillment or the features or the marketing program, you just have more questions that you don't wanna ask here, you want to see the pricing, all of that, request a demo. Request a demo. That'll put you in touch with our team. 
Other than that, thanks for stopping by. Good questions today. Hope you found uh, something or another valuable here. Hope you picked up some advice that you can run away with and, and get to work on. And most importantly, I hope that uh, we have a chance to work together in the future on the inside in art storefronts uh, so that we can, we can get to work building your art business. Uh, take care. Have a great day. I'll send you a follow-up email with some of the links to stuff I mentioned here today. Uh, other than that, have a great weekend too. Long weekend. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh,